I gave you the opportunity to resume that sentence. Sorry about that break. Yeah, no, what I was saying is we frequently don't know the direction we're going to go when we're writing uh, the script. We don't do an outline. We just sort of start with the first scene and see where the story takes us as we're writing it. But once we start shooting, we don't digress much from what we've written. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not that we don't encourage the actors to have fun with it. <laughs> it's just that we don't, uh, at that point, we sort of like to keep the dialogue the way it is. The yeah. dialogue sometimes changes in the rehearsal, but not when we're shooting. Well, I read an incident where you, you guys shot a scene and then you stopped them and said you missed that word. and, and Well, well sometimes it's, <laughs> if it's an important word, we'll go back for it. <laughs> yeah. If it's the subject of the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I also think that's misinterpreted uh, for a lot of different, you know, people say, well, you know, they're really like control freaks, and I've, I've read these, re, you know, these interviews that they want to control everything, yeah. which is not the case. It's it's the case is it, they give you a lot of freedom, how you do it, they give you a tremendous amount of freedom. But if someone comes up with an idea that has nothing to do with what they wrote, mm -hmm. and that's what happens sometimes. The guy says, "Well, you know, I feel like vomiting in this scene." Yeah. And they, well, you know, this scene's not about that. You know. Right. The, they Feeling don't encourage might, that type of... It might uh, spoil the wedding scene. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 Actors suddenly yeah. fell the edge. Although, but generally, you know. we don't discourage vomiting. We've had a lot of that yeah, in right. like yeah. different yeah. movies. Yeah, it's just yeah. dramatic. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it, I mean, like, for, you know, say, like, a love scene yeah. or something. Right. So, Somewhere a learned paper right. is being written about yeah. vomiting and, yeah. uh, as, uh, and its symbolism in the films. Uh, yeah. You were saying something interesting during the break, which was that... Uh, You've kind of based a character on somebody after the fact. You know what I'm talking about? M Miller's Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say this on. I have to say this on. Yeah. Well, you didn't have to say this. guy is. Kind of unfair, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 what's the story with uh, your forehead? I was just wondering. There's no. There's a connection. I'll draw it for you in just a moment. <laughs> but nobody can remember. <laughs> No actor can, uh, and, and other people too, actors and regular people can right. forget your begging for your life thing, and that, which was truly amazing. I mean, it was just, um, someday it'll be in the time capsule of great moments. Uh, I hate to ask anyone this, but I'm going to anyway, since he was rude enough to ask oh, wow. about my forehead. Uh, <laughs> as they say in the trade, what were you drawing upon for that? Actually, when Joel and Ethan were standing there, like saying, cry, cry, John, <laughs> come on. I mean, they really, actually, really, he's really tyrannical. Uh, but, uh, you know, you got to do whatever you can do, you know, in a situation like that. It's not, you know, I, I have never been... You don't have been to have ever had a gun to your head or anything. I actually did have a gun to my head once. Come on. Yeah, but it, was, but it wasn't like that at all. I was yeah. a, a teenager, and I drove him to a schoolyard and at night, and guy was playing basketball, and my friends and I were sort of yelling, and then we, we drove into to play basketball with the guy, because there was one guy and there was three of us, and mm -hmm. the guy took a gun out and put it right to my head. I remember I was on a bicycle, and I, I was trying to, like, pedal away, but I couldn't mm -hmm. really move. And he said, I'm a cop. I said, oh, we just came to play basketball. <laughs> we, you know, we thought we'd like to shoot some right. hoops with you. Well, but, a uh, cop would never shoot anyone, so you knew you were safe Well, there. right, yeah, right. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I, it's yeah. hard to say. I mean, it's a, it's a combination of a lot of different things. Plus, it's, you know, it was a well-written scene, and mm -hmm. I just, you know, that's your job to come up with. It, it's hard. Because to do something like that, if you've really never really been through it in a way, so you just sort of have to substitute as best as possible. That was also interesting because it was, I think, the first scene we shot with you. The second. Was Actually, the, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the second. The first day was with yeah. 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 Did you make him do it again? Oh, um, many times. We, we did it. Actually, we spent most of the day doing that. Yeah. Those takes on you walking through the woods. Yeah. So we did it. There were a lot of a lot of takes of that. I kept going yeah. the wrong way because I was getting lost. We had a path, but it was all these trees, and I was walking backwards. So sometimes I would go like in these little ditches, and I was like, because <laughs> <laughs> the guy had the steady cam, and I, I kept getting I don't know. I kept thinking I'm never going to make it, you know, because <laughs> so I had to walk backwards, and, and I, I didn't have a mark because just you know, yeah. looking at trees and right. Yeah, it was uh, difficult. Unlike Henry Fonda, who they say never missed his mark no matter what happened. Well, yeah. Yeah. he's really good. <laughs> Your m own mother said that you cut out pictures of actors as a kid, uh, including Kirk Douglas. Why Kirk Douglas? I like the way he croaked. I don't, I don't know. I don't know about Kirk, you know. <laughs> I don't know. I liked, you know, Spartacus and all those. Uh, yeah. He just was one of the first people, him and, and Burt Lancaster. You know, I just was sort of... When, I, when he killed the guy in Spartacus, that was really got me started. When he put the guy's head in the soup, you know, mm -hmm. that was it for me. You know, from then on in, I wanted to be uh, 
Uh, Richard Woodmark mean anything to you? I mean, a man who pushed no, an old lady. I was never really. Uh, later on, people said, yeah. you know, because I threw my mother out a window, and they said he threw his old lady down the stairs. But yeah, it's uh, that was never really a, you know. How, how many films have mothers been thrown out of windows in? I think you broke new ground there, didn't you? Was that was that? No, that well, was that was uh, five, five corners, corners wasn't it? Oh, in five, Tony sure. Bill. Yeah. But I mean, I, 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 it's such a a, a moment. Um, can you remember who or what is responsible for that moment where you were standing when you created the idea of let's have mom go out? Well, the that window? wasn't me. Actually, Shan John Shanley wrote that, and yeah. it was in it was in the script. Let's you know? defenestrate. Yeah, and later. of course I have to like take the brunt, but it was really him getting his revenge on. You know, you know the street would say, "Hey, wait a minute! You the guy threw his mother out the window?" Yeah, they do that. Well, yeah. some guy said to me recently, uh, this was a while ago, but a cabby, he looked at me and said. They let you out. <laughs> they let you out. <laughs> they let you out. Yeah, that was a while ago. If anyone has just tuned in, he threw his mother out a window in a film. I want to make right. that clear. Uh, people we'll do never come do out. that to my mother. No, never. no. I hope not. Uh, people do come out of Barton Fink wondering this: Did all of this stuff actually happen, or am I supposed to take it that some of it happened in the mind of the character? Yeah. Well. It was never intended to um, literally be sort of taken as, um, you know, all a dream or something like that. Mm -hmm. Although the, um, I mean, the intention of the movie is certainly to um, um, be internal to the character of Barton. That what the movie is trying to sort of uh, reflect his sort of state of mind, but not literally sort of taking it as a dream is taking it sort of one step further than was intended. But speaking about Crania, yeah. you were going to draw a connection with the Band-Aid on your forehead. Well, uh, the only reason I have the Band-Aid on my forehead is that it conceals a hideous scab underneath <laughs> it. But since uh, your films have often chilled me and produced images that uh, I'll we can't get out. We thought you smashed into the wall after you saw Barton Fink because that's a reaction that's been happening lately. So, yeah, it's the been... <laughs> Oh, is that the movie that's causing riots? <laughs> so I thought just for, for fun. You were throwing typewriters to yeah. kill people. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have this much pleasantry on the set, or is it all business? You... No, it's a fairly relaxed set, yeah. I think. I mean, yeah. uh, it's, um, uh, it's, it's fairly uh, fast. I mean, we work fairly quickly, and we, uh, we sort of concentrate on the work, but it's not a somber set, I wouldn't yeah. say. Yeah. Um, in the last few seconds, just for, I'm, and we're going to close. I'm going to reveal my hideous scab, and then people will always remember this show. And it's just kind of me sort of ties in with your work. But before we do, I was in Europe at the time that you beat out Spike Lee, as it's come to be known, uh, for which he uncharacteristically sounded off. Um, I read a German magazine that said America's sie kann nicht noch nicht something something in die Hände in Schwarze geben. They cannot. They still don't have the guts to give the prize to a black man. Do you have anything at all to say about that controversy? Well, I don't. There, there are at least yeah, two of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do, do you. Do you see that as a competition with somebody else? Uh, no, I, I don't see it as a. I mean, I. Uh, you Are know, the directors who should chat up about their films? Well, I just don't. It isn't really. I mean, we've never looked at it as a competition, but we're. You know, on the other hand, we're sort of. Uh, you know, we'll, we're happy to take whatever awards are given to us, but mm -hmm. it's not the. It's not the reason we go out and make the movie. But I, I, no, I mean, I think there's not really a whole lot to say about uh, that whole controversy from our point of view. It's. Let's I think we're, it. we're smarter staying out of it. Okay. Yeah. What did you learn from Robert X. Modica? Is that his name? Oh, that was my, uh, one of my acting teachers. Yeah. Well, basically, he just taught this Sandy Meisner approach, which is based on, uh, on listening, you know, mm -hmm. putting your attention on the other person. I've, I've had a lot of different teachers, but that was sort of the thing that we worked on. And you learn that, you know, your partner can do a lot for you in a scene, and it's not just about you. It's, yeah. it's about dealing with the other person. In a word, you have teachers have helped you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely many. <laughs>